Welcome to The Shed. I'm Sid, this is Jack, Mackie's on the camera, and today we are going to be learning how to convert your bike to a single speed in an emergency situation. This is episode three of our On Trail Fix It series where we leave the comfort of the shed, leave Jack behind. <laughs> and show you guys how to fix common problems that arise while you're on the trail. If you haven't watched the first two episodes, that's how to fix a flat and how to fix a broken chain. You can check those out over here. So if you guys have had wild, crazy problems while you're out on the trail, share those in the comments below and maybe we'll make a video that will help you the next time you're in that situation. For this task, you will need a multi-tool that has a chain break. If you don't have a multi-tool with a chain break, you will need both a multi-tool and a chain break. And you will also need the appropriate quick link for your chain. Now it's time to head to the trail. And here we have a mountain biker in distress. He appears to have broken his derailleur hanger. Let's see if we can give him some help. Okay, so what we are gonna show you here is a fix for either a broken derailleur or a broken derailleur hanger. This is the hanger part. Um, it is a common mechanical to have a broken derailleur hanger. These hangers are designed to break before the derailleur or the frame break. So in some ways they are designed to break because they are protecting the more expensive parts here. So the first thing I would say is you should carry an extra derailleur hanger on long rides. But let's say you didn't. Or let's say you're riding a different bike and the derailleur hanger you have is the wrong hanger, hypothetically. Or the hanger that you have in your backpack is from a bike that you haven't ridden for like six years yet it's still in your backpack. Anyway, they're all different. That, actually, I think that is probably a point worth making. They are all different bike to bike. Some bike manufacturers keep them consistent for every bike, some don't. Niner tends to use the same hangers for at least all of their mountain bikes, I think. So we just carry one hanger in this scenario we would replace the hanger. However, that's fairly straightforward. So we're gonna talk about a single speed conversion for when something like this happens or the derailleur breaks and you are way out in the middle of nowhere and you need to get home. I think it is worth pointing out that if you are just a couple miles from home and there's a decent bit of descending in those couple miles, I personally wouldn't bother with this. I would take my chain break, I would break the chain, I would shove all of this in my pockets, and I would hike slash pump because this is kind of a bit of work. Do you think that's fair? I mean, I'd probably say if you're within a mile and it's like, okay, you're gonna be walking for 20 minutes, or if it's almost all downhill, it's not worth it. Yeah. But any farther than that, you're gonna be out for a long time. Just use your judgment. Do you like hiking? Yeah. Go for a hike. Do you hate hiking? Does it make your feet hurt like me? <laughs> Maybe you want to do this. In this example, the derailleur is disconnected. We did not break the hanger. We are already sacrificing a chain for you guys. So you're just gonna have to use your imagination. Imagine that the hanger is broken in half and disconnected. In that case, you do not need to detach the derailleur from the hanger. If you've broken your derailleur, it's still gonna be attached like that. You will need to detach this first. And generally the most common thing that breaks is the cage. If you hit it on something hard, like you'll break the cage, so the derailleur is no longer working, so you have to remove it and convert the bike to a single speed. First thing we are gonna do is break the chain. There's no reason to worry about doing this at the quick link because we are shortening this chain anyway. Or is there, because then we could reattach it with the quick link? Yeah, if that was, I mean, if your chain had a quick link, but there's not really a good way to remove a quick link on a bicycle, without yeah, it involves like a tool. and pliers and it's easier to just break the chain. So that's what we're gonna do. Again, I'm hoping that this series of videos has made you really want to get a multi-tool with a chain break <laughs> because you're in a lot of trouble if you do this without a chain break tool because you can't even get it off and it's just gonna be going into your spokes and it's gonna be awful. I'm just gonna pick a spot. So as we talked about in our chain break fixing video, you want to be very cautious on this step to make sure that everything is lined up before you start wailing on it. So I'm gonna make sure this is right in the center. Of the pin. Of the pin. There, okay. And every chain break is a little bit different, but the basic idea is that you line the chain up against one edge, and then you screw that pin 
through yeah. and it pops the, the chain pin out. If you've learned nothing else from this channel, learn how your tools work and don't put on the ground. Those two things will get you far in life. On this one, I think I could either prop it all the way out or not because we're gonna have to shorten it anyway. But I think I'll go for not just so that I don't have to do that later. So I'm gonna go, might've gone too far. <laughs> might've come all the way out. <laughs> we'll see. No, brilliant. Okay, so we've broken our chain. We're gonna pull our chain out. If it's muddy, you wanna try not, not to, to drag, this drag it in the, mud, in the dirt. Again, don't put on the ground. I think you're gonna have to go the other direction because of the pin. I just, I just came to that conclusion. Oh my God, don't do this like I'm doing this. It's a hot mess. I swear like I look at a chain and it just like curls up into all these balls and it's just really annoying. Okay, but you can like, Drape this on your tire, for example. There we go, not in the mud, out of the way. Now we're gonna remove the derailleur. That's not the right bolt. Get with the program. That's the one you would undo. There it is. So talk us through what you're doing. I am loosening this so that the cable, whoop, boing, there it goes. So this is the part that I'm not quite sure what our plan is. You just have to like use the derailleur to pull that part. Like basically you're just gonna pull on the derailleur. It's, I don't, yeah. That was easy. Pick up your trash, folks. So basically Sid just pulled on the derailleur until-, until... It popped the cable end off. This is the part where if you have zip ties or electrical tape or something, just taper down like that. Or up like this, you'll figure something out. But we're gonna just assume that you don't because the reality is you're already gonna have a slow ride out of the woods. What does it matter if this is banging around? All right, step one is you have to pick a gear. Unfortunately, if you have a lot of climbing left, you cannot just pick your biggest gear, which is again, another point. If you have a lot of steep climbing and descending left, and you know you're not gonna be able to do it in a middle gear, just start walking. Don't bother with this. But you have to pick a gear where your chain line is gonna be more or less straight. Cause this is not a real single speed. And before we go any farther, I think we need a few disclaimers, which is that you cannot do this on a full suspension bike and then ride out normally. You have to be careful because your chain line gets longer when you compress your suspension. So if you set this up and then you go off and you hit a drop, you will just break the chain again. So this is a survival mode fix. This could literally save your life but you are not gonna be able to shred. Sorry. Survival over shredding. So I'm gonna just, well, I'll just sort of see. Right now I'm just gonna pick my gear. I think it'll be easier to tell how straight the line is from right side up, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna say, and you can correct me if you think I am wrong, but I think we can get away with that. Yeah, that looks pretty good, it looks pretty straight. We have picked our gear. Now we have to shorten our chain. And again, remembering that outside connects with inside, not the other way around. So this is actually inside, so I could go here to there. Do you need to leave slack on no. a full suspension bike? Well, if your chain doesn't line up, like if it was, if it was like this, mm. you could not do that gear. True. Because you just, like the chain doesn't line up properly. Right, and you can't pull it tighter. You can't pull it tighter because yeah. there's no derailleur. So this, this actually lined up yeah. fairly nicely. It's gonna be a little slack. But a little slack is better, especially on a full suspension bike because that chain line is getting yeah. longer. And what you're gonna do on a full suspension is you're gonna put your shock into either lockout mode or pro pedal or like the firmest mode you can. That's how you're riding home. And you're gonna be really careful to not compress it if you can help it. Remember what we said about survival over shredding. This actually worked out fairly well in that this is an inner, so I can pop this pin out and connect these guys like that. That is this one, we're gonna not let go, do not let go, do not let go. Because it turns out they all look the same. <laughs> I'm gonna put this in here and then I'm gonna confirm one more time that that is the one that I wanna do. So I feel like this is gonna be the slightly challenging part because there's gonna be tension on it. What can you do to get rid of the tension? 
There you go. Uh, that was very clever. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why I didn't think of that. So just like in our previous video, what you're doing here is you're putting the chain back together. And this is for a situation where you do not have a quick link. If you had a quick link, you would simply remove the outer link that is that one. And then you'd use your quick link to connect the chain back together. Like we talked about in the previous video, you want to be very cautious as you start to put this in, make sure it's going in straight, make sure your chain brake tool isn't bending at weird angles. Chain brake tools do break, it's very annoying. And then you wanna pull this in until it is, or push this in or whatever. You wanna push this in until it is flush, cause that will be a little farther, a little farther. Okay, so this one did not press all the way in for some reason. So Sid's gonna push it back out a little bit from the other side. This is, I feel like a thing that happens. Yeah. So do not panic. Feel good about that. Oh yeah, that seems way better. And again, it'll be pretty stiff when you attach it like this. So just try to get it moving a little bit. You can go back and forth. That's how we realized it wasn't actually attached the last time. So better now than later. We're gonna pick up all of our trail trash. Hopefully you have a backpack or pocket for your derailleur. And I believe I was on this one. So what you'll probably need to do is attach it on the bottom. Make sure it's correctly attached on the narrow wide part. It does not want to be. There we go. And then just back pedal until it pops all the way on. There it goes. So you now have a single speed. Let's see how we did. We're gonna lock this out. This is pedaling. Okay, and it's falling off. Well, that was unsuccessful. <laughs> I think our error was I kind of, the bike was not actually flat when I decided that it was a straight enough chain line from here. So as soon as Mackie got on, it dropped down to this gear. So we're gonna shorten it again. I think we were optimistic to think that you could have this easy of a gear. I yeah. wanted that to work, but it didn't work. That's a useful way to like test it is set it, get on the bike and ride. And if it shifts into a harder gear, you probably are gonna have to shorten it again because that's the line, like that's the straightest chain line and it's always gonna go for its straightest chain right. line. And I don't know if there's a good way to tell what that's gonna do before you go through this process. Good question. If someone has any ideas, yeah. make sure that you know what gear it is that yeah. it decided to be on, which is this one. So we are gonna shorten this. We've got an inside here. It needs an outside. I think we're gonna go to there. Yeah, I wonder if that's gonna be too tight though, because there is always some compression as soon as you sit on the bike, unless you're on a hardtail. Yeah, but the last time it was so loose, if it's loose again, it'll just fall off. So I don't know where the, it would be very loose or slightly tight. I would probably go loose. So all the way to think, here. Yeah. That's gonna stay on. There's no way, it'll just do what it was doing before. Well, I don't think the reason it was skipping gears was because of the chain looseness because once it fell into that gear it stayed in that gear i just didn't realize there's only one gear that it's going to go in i thought like you said that it, it just can't be like way not straight but it seems like there will be one gear that your bike will be able to do it does seem like that is it the always going to be the fourth or whatever from the bottom? No, it's gonna depend on the, the chain line and stuff of the crank, in case, so. Never mind. In case you haven't figured this out by now, this is why if you're not that far from the car, we advise that you just start walking. <laughs> well, let's see. Oh, that's actually working pretty well. She says with Yay! surprise. Thank you. And just a quick note, you may find as you start pedaling that even though you've put it in the most direct chain line that it still wants to fall into those lower gears. Unfortunately, that is just what happens with this kind of makeshift repair. You may just have to occasionally stop and put it back on the original gear. It's still better than hiking for 20 miles. 
And here's how to do a trail side single speed conversion in one minute. First, remove your chain by breaking it using your chain break tool and pulling it out of the derailleur. Next, remove your derailleur. If the derailleur hanger isn't broken, remove the derailleur from the hanger, then loosen the bolt that holds the derailleur cable and pull the derailleur until it pops off the cable end and comes free. Now wrap the chain around the front chain ring and cassette and try to get the chain line as close to straight as you can. Always err on the side of too easy of a gear because you can always shorten your chain if you need to, but it's much harder to make it longer. Cut down your chain, making sure that you are meeting inner link to inner link if you're using a quick link and inner link to outer link if you aren't. If you're riding a full suspension, make sure to leave a bit of chain slack. Reconnect your chain and place it on the chain ring and rear cog you chose. Lock out your rear suspension and try riding. If it stays in place, great job. If not, see what rear cog it wants to stay on and repeat the process using that gear. Now carefully make your way home and remember survival over shredding. Thank you.